So this is version two of my 3D printed telescope. It's a six inch primary mirror. And um, this is the uh, modeling tool that I'm using for this. Uh, Fusion 360, if you guys aren't familiar with it, it's a great application. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of show you how I designed uh, this particular scope. So uh, what I'll do is kind of jump over here on the right hand side and turn off some of these components. And uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to show you the, I guess the first thing would be the, uh, the primary mirror cell. So this is, this is kind of what I came up with. And again, keep in mind that this is a pretty small mirror, six inches, 153 millimeters. So um, uh, I did a very simple uh, plop. I used plop to define these, um, these points here. It's a, a three point plop. And um, I believe it had a 31.4 radius. So total diameter here of this, if you were to draw a circle to these, uh, these, these points, it's uh, 62.8 millimeters. And um, so, so that was pretty simple. And, and then um, I, I did buy a new printer recently. So this was, I was able to print this all in one piece. Um, it's got a much bigger uh, build volume than my previous printer. So I'm pretty happy about that. Um, what I did for edge supports was, uh, I'm calling this a modified wiffle tree. Uh, modified in the sense that it doesn't pit, pivot here at the 45 degree mark like it, it should. Uh, but again, it took some liberties given that it was such a small mirror. Um, I did, however, put the these, uh, I'm going to print some nylon thumb screws. Um, and these go at, uh, you know, the traditional 22.5 and I think it's 67.5 um, degrees. Um, point here right so the mirror if you were to tilt the whole scope right it's going to tilt this way right so the the mirror is just going to kind of sit on those edges actually I'll show you the um, here's the edge support screws so they'll look kind of like that this guy right here and um, that'll go right through there and there'll be um, six of these all around uh, uh, although the the top doesn't really need them but I'm going to put them in there anyways just for placement um, and to secure the mirror a little bit and then um, in terms of uh, this section here, this will actually have one of these screws here as well, but it'll also have this kind of clip here to hold hold the uh, the mirror in place, right? So the mirror will kind of sit on top of that. I think I can show you what that looks like, right? That's what the mirror will sit like. Um, cool. All right, so that's the primary mirror cell. Now that's gonna sit in a mirror box, which looks like this. Um, let me actually hide the cell for a minute and show you what the box looks like. All right, so again, um, really large format printer here, so I was able to print this thing um, all as one piece. Um, this measures, it's 240 millimeters from this edge to that edge, uh, thereabouts. Um, so that's about nine and a half inches. Um, fits, fits really nicely on my printer. Actually, that's about the max. Um, so the center point here, I just cut this piece out in the middle, right? This is where the primary mirror, the, the cell will sit. And I uh, didn't see any reason to waste a bunch of plastic in printing that. Um, these guys up here, so you can see there's three of these little sort of, um, uh, I don't know what you'd call these things. I'm actually using that to hold the primary mirror cell in place so that as, as I tilt, it doesn't move, right? The, the cell doesn't move within the box. Um, so these things actually work real nice and um, I can tilt the cell uh, as I'm collimating and um, actually these little feet here you can see that will be pushed up by uh, this collimation screw which I've kind of designed you can see it at the bottom that's what that looks like right so these will kind of screw into into those those holes there at the bottom and um, that'll push the primary mirror cell in those in those specific places. And then these guys here on the cell uh, will be used to kind of lock it down. I've got these lock screws that I've sort of designed that kind of fit in there and uh, they'll pull through the bottom and um, I can put a, a little nut on there and um, tighten that up so that uh, nothing moves around. Um, the uh, These guys right here, they're gonna hold the truss tubes and uh, this was actually designed, these are angled for a 750 millimeter focal length, right? Because that's, that's the uh, focal length for my particular mirror. Um, so uh, if your project has a different, or if your mirror has a different focal length, 
this uh, this is not going to work for you. But um, hit me up or let me know, and maybe we can design something a little bit different. Uh, okay, so the um, the next piece is the truss tubes, right? So those will kind of fit in there. Um, I actually decided to purchase some carbon fiber tubes. I actually found these on, on Amazon. They're fairly reasonable. Um, they're almost the perfect length. They're actually a little too large, which is good, right? I was able to cut it down. I think I cut about an inch off. Um, I can't remember the exact measurements, but um, uh, let's call it an inch. I, cu I cut an inch off and um, it fit perfectly. They, these guys were, I think, 500 millimeters in length. Um, Super strong, super lightweight. Um, really happy with the way it turned out. I'll show you what that looks like um, in a minute. Now, on top of these guys, um, I have these little, I'm calling them truss caps. Uh, and this is what will actually secure this to the, um, the upper optical assembly. Um, these I printed in PLA, but I think I'm going to reprint them in, um, in carbon fiber. My, my printer does support carbon fiber. And there's actually two of them here. Let me just kind of show you, just so you're not, right? There's, uh, okay, so I got that one off, right? So there's one here in the front, and there's an exact duplicate that's mirrored that sits in the back. Um, and I'll show you how that connects in a minute. Um, but it's got this little notch here for some additional support. Um, and, uh, and then this little um, channel here, this hole uh, will accept a, I think it's a, an M6 thumb screw that's just going to go kind of go through both of those, and um, these kind of sandwich around the, um, uh, the a piece on the upper upper optical assembly, which let me just turn that on right now. Looks kind of like that, so you can see the the, the caps kind of fit in here. Um, this is actually several components. Let me just kind of uh, turn some of these off here, and then I'll come back and show you each one. So. Uh, first, the lower rib. So this is, a, again, a single piece. Uh, that's what that looks like right there. And um, this is designed to uh, fit nicely with those truss caps. You can see the notch here. Um, and uh, there's one on either side, right? So it's kind of a sandwich sort of model, right? You can see on this side and then on this side. Um, three holes here all around and that is going to uh, support my um, I'm calling these the rib supports right so there's three of them they're independently uh, printed and um, I put a bunch of holes in here just to kind of make it lighter and and uh, let the air through to this little zigzaggy sort of pattern to give it some strength some rigidity and the same six sort of uh, uh, same three holes here at the top which will, oh, before I show you that, uh, notice there's three of them, but there's also one more, which is going to be the, uh, for the focuser, right? So the focuser will attach there, turn that one on. And um, I'm, I'm actually using a, a two inch, um, it's a GSO two inch Crayford style focuser that I got uh, online. Um, it has very specific uh, measurements, these holes are 76 millimeters center to center, and um, it's designed for a flat plated um, focuser. So if you have a different focuser, the nice thing about that is that you can just kind of redesign or reprint this one piece and everything else should still continue to work. Um, my focuser looks kind of like that. Actually, let me kind of switch over a view here so you can see what the focuser looks like, but that just kind of you know bolts into place there. Um, super, super awesome. Um, and then uh, the the upper rib is also has an integrated or built-in support system here, the spider assembly for my secondary mirror cell that's going to kind of hang off of that. And um, as you can see, I've got three holes here at the top, which um, will accept my, I've got like these little uh, socket head cap screws that will go through there, pretty traditional, pretty, pretty common. Um, and then in the center, what I decided to do was uh, another M6 thumb screw. I'm going to kind of get drop down through that. And um, this hole is actually much bigger than six millimeters. The, the, the diameter is much bigger than that to give it some wiggle room so that I can kind of, you know, move it around and, and adjust as I'm collimating. Um, the, the little secondary mirror cell hangs off of that. And uh, 
in here, you can see there's a hole that kind of goes all the way through here. And uh, the reason I did that was um, I actually uh, used a, I think it's a 10 millimeter barrel nut that um, I can kind of throw through there. And that's what my, my thumb screw from the top will connect to, and that'll kind of hold it in place. And again, this diameter is much bigger than the barrel nut's diameter so that um, uh, this can move around freely and will be controlled by uh, those socket head cap screws um, off the top for collimation purposes. And they're all threaded as you can kind of see in the model here. Um, on the secondary mirror cell, I did a little recess here. Um, that will be for my epoxy. I can put the epoxy sort of dabs in there. And the mirror, the surface of the mirror will actually rent, rest against this surface and that surface so that it's nice and flat and the epoxy will sit sort of in that recessed area and uh, hopefully spread out as I push it into place and it'll be a nice a nice secure fit in there. Um, so that's pretty much it. The um, Stay tuned and I'll show you, actually, nope, sorry, there's one more piece. The altitude bearings, which um, are at the bottom here, look kind of like that. I did have to print these in three different pieces. You can see that here, one, two, and three. And um, obviously for size reasons, right, these get pretty big. Um, I think it's pretty well balanced, at least for my particular uh, setup with the, the mirror weight. And uh, the focuser is actually pretty heavy. So the first iteration of this actually had these a little bit too small and it was super top heavy. Um, but I, I think I've got it now. If not, I'll add some weight on the back. These things right here, you can kind of see I got one here and one opposite here. Um, the reason for that is um, I, I have this uh, uh, option to add another carbon fiber tube to run between those two just to add a little bit more support. Um, so far it seems to work fine without it, but um, I'll probably add those in there um, just because uh, I want it to be nice and, and secure. Um, the way these things connect, um, I'll have two thumb screws that fit through here, and that'll go all the way through to the mirror box. Um, and as I was designing this, I had to put these like holes in here. You can see on the side, let me turn off the, the altitude bearing. So you can see these holes, and uh, it just kind of worked out real nice that this hole and this hole, um, I lined them up so that when my altitude bearings just kind of slide into that, let me show you what it looks like on the other side. I'll turn off the box. So you can see here on this side, I've got these um, uh, extruded sort of uh, uh, pieces that fit right into those holes on the mirror box. So it works out really great. And then I'll just put um, a little nut and probably a big washer on this side uh, to hold it in place. And um, yeah, so that's, that's the telescope.